This week, we're reading Poison Study by Maria Snyder, otherwise known as Fire Festival is a Federal Holiday. Hi, readers. I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines, those swashbuckling ladies who have to work a little harder than expected for their happy ending. Want to see what's next on our TBR list? Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Instagram for a sneak peek at upcoming content or to help us pick our next book. I wanted to open with a few points before we like dived into the book, just as like reminders for us and for like anything for you guys listening. So I don't know if anyone's noticed, but we haven't really been reviewing brand new books. Mm, That's true. Yeah. So our last three or four, which was. Uh, Yeah. It's been like a lot. Yeah. Poison Study, Half a Soul, Daughter of the Forest, which was Twilight. Mm -hmm. What's the one before that? Uh, Grizzly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I had read that, but you hadn't. Yeah. We've kind of steered away from trying brand new books, which is what our hopes and dreams were when we started this podcast. But (laughs) we don't want to start as thief. Um, We get too bamboozled by book talk sometimes. We are trying to steer towards books that like either one of us have read or both of us have read before. Mm -hmm. So we're not recommending or reviewing things that are, you know, trash. Yeah. Um, But these are all books that uh, don't get the clout that they should have. Like they maybe came out like right before the social media burst of, you know, book talk and people um, all of a sudden didn't have to be like embarrassed about being like a book nerd. These were the books that were the OG good books before then and deserve. Hype. <laughs> more attention than they're getting now like yeah. they, all of these books could be re-released now with like oh my god super fancy covers and yes. like the swag bags to go with them and they would be a hundred percent better than half the shit that's yes. being published now a hundred percent um poison study poison study and then point two so we had a you told me her name and i already forgot okay so her name on instagram is taylor tarkington i love you you love all of our instagram posts heart heart every time (laughs) this is gonna sound bad but i say it so endearingly uh every time i see your instagram handle i say in my head taylor um (laughs) and i know that is probably not how you pronounce it but i mean that from like the bottom of my heart it makes me giggle every time i'm like this is (laughs) taylor okay i love it (laughs) katie so when katie sent me she sent me screenshots of your messages and i lost my shit because like there was all of these books that you had recommended so it was the undertaking of heart and mercy yep fucking reading it right now it's amazing spinning silver by Uh, naomi novik who mm. i heart her so much she writes fanfic too what yeah i saw a random like interview thing that she said that she loves writing fanfic because it's like fun (sighs) Heart. I have a new thing to research I after know, this. Yeah. Um, anyway, Taylor. Taylor. So great recommendations <laughs> on those two. And then, so she recommended one that neither one of us have read, which was um, T. Kingfisher, which was Nettle and Bone. Oh, yeah. So uh-huh. started reading that one, too. I'm yes. like halfway through. Eh, it kind of slowed a little bit, but it's That's still... Fair. Good. Like, good yeah. enough that I'm going to check out her other shit. It's funny because my partner read uh, T. Kingfisher books because uh, she does horror and, like, romance fantasy. And so my partner read some of the, like, horror thriller books. So it's funny that he has read more <laughs> T. Than, Kingfisher yeah. than I have. But it's funny, like, she's a OG, can do anything. <laughs> yeah. And so there's a T. Kingfisher did a Beauty and the Beast retelling. <gasps> oh. Uh, Byrony, Byrony and Roses, I think is the name. <gasps> that sounds familiar. Did you read it? No, but I know it's on my TBR. Maybe we should both read it. That would be fun. We can try something. We can be brave mm. and try someone we haven't. <laughs> I do not have, want to be brave. <laughs> something we haven't read yet. But anyway. Uh, your message was... Very well received. In Thank the you. depths of my soul. Um. <laughs> but we have been talking about it for weeks. Yeah, so. we have. Back to Poison Study. Yeah. We'll get rolling. Please introduce us to our heroine. <laughs> okay. So our heroine is Yelena. Is that how you read it? Yelena. Yelena. Uh, mm, Yelena. Just say what your heart says. Yelly. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tell your heart no. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> Old yeller. <laughs> Um, our heroine, who shall not be named, is Yelena. Yelly. Is, y- <laughs> Yelly is, okay, she is serious voice. <laughs> That's like one octave off from your smutty voice. So. <laughs> our heroine is not doing too hot when we first meet her. Yes. She's been hanging out in a dungeon for over a year. 
waiting for an execution date. So she's dirty and smelly and emaciated. Emaciated. How do you say it? Girl, I thought I knew and then you said it. And now I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. And so she is about as close to death as as she could be while still like conscious enough to realize that she's not dead yet. Mm -hmm. So like a light appears and the guards open her cell door. She's like, oh, sweet Jesus, I'm dying now. Today is, my, <laughs> today is my execution date. The guards come and kind of drag her out of her cell. And she's in such a she's in such a dark place that she's just she just feels relieved. Mm -hmm. And we kind of get piece by piece why she's in the dungeon. And it's kind of she's there for murder. Ooh. And she's like, yep, I killed some dude. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt. Like, I absolutely committed a murder and it's fine. Like, just kill me now. This is the code of the land. And the guards drag her out of the cell. She's bracing herself to go to like the hangman's noose, except they drag her through the castle and to an office. An office. An office. Uh, <laughs> have you read Throne of Glass? I read like the first four or five books. Okay, so the first scene in Throne of Glass where she's brought... Um, oh, yeah. Identical. So I wonder if Sarah J. Mass has read this book. I... Because mm. I... These scenes are identical. If you have read Throne of Glass when uh, Aelin, Selena, or whatever, is brought through the dungeons, she's all fucked up, and they're like, kneel before the prince or whatever. And then he's like, let me offer you a deal. That is fucking identical to this scene. I didn't piece those two together. But mm -hmm. funny you should mention that, because I thought that the Shadow and Bone series had the same world building elements, the same, like, government. Oh. It kind of does. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. parallels because when was this book released it uh, was uh, like early 2000s wasn't it yeah it would have had to have been wow we have found the og so it's like the <laughs> luna series of publishing we talked about that before like um hmm? luna as like a sub publishing brand did mm -hmm. like fantasy romance oh. it was like the first publishing thing to like sub genre sub market thing mm -hmm. to be like hey we're doing specifically fantasy romance books interesting mm -hmm. yeah because this was published in 2005 oh so that shit. would have been yeah this is like an older but it's crazy because it has staying power like it, it yeah we have drawn parallels to recent books like it sounds exactly so this had to have influenced them fascinating yeah. hmm in wow the og text <laughs> i feel like authors should cite like inspirational works yeah because this scene honestly like she's drugged through the castle dying all fucked up having spent like a year or almost a year in the yeah, dungeons she says, like five seasons in a yeah. dungeon which plot hole by the way like why i yeah there's no like uh what is that the sixth amendment like yeah right like to a speedy trial <laughs> yeah so but there, she's not waiting for a trial she's just waiting for an execution date like, oh they're that's gonna true house her and feed her for over a year just cause? So there are times. <laughs> I'm using my important hands right now. <laughs> yeah, she has the whole like Italian. <laughs> like... <laughs> there, there are times that when it really kills the momentum of a story to introduce a secondary character, mm. like a secondary main character, like too close I can see that. to the beginning. Obviously going to be a hero some somewhere introduced here, but like mm -hmm. I like to have a buildup. Mm -hmm. So like if it's a 400 page book, I don't want to meet the heroine on hero. Hero? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> the MMC. I don't know what that stands for, but M male main character. Is that what that stands for? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Life reveal. Uh, <laughs> I wish you guys could see the like blank stare. <laughs> this is what Three Cocktails does uh, to okay. <laughs> male main character. Yes. I think it kind of kills the like momentum a little bit, like a little bit of the mystery and the conflict mm -hmm. if you meet them too soon. I could see that. But uh, especially if you don't introduce like a possible other love interest you know yeah. what i mean yeah or any kind of mention like you can mm -hmm. do you can introduce a character without like throwing them into the scene like yeah. have people talk about them yeah that's something that happens in crown duel with shivraith you hear about this like oh that is true foppy commander who doesn't do like doesn't uh -huh. know anything about commanding except what he's a badass yeah um, but that doesn't happen here, and it actually works. She arrives in this office, and this author is just like, "Here, here's this charismatic ninja, like right in your <laughs> charismatic face." Charismatic ninja, <laughs> yeah, that is him. <laughs> yeah. So Yelena, Yelena does a. I'm going to do that the entire it's fine. episode. <laughs> so she does a quick survey of this office and the main man occupying the desk, and realizes that she's arrived in the presence of the commander, commander with a capital C, mm -hmm. uh, main security advisor and spy master extraordinaire. His uniform is 
all black with two red stars in the collar. That's how you know he's the love interest. He wears all black. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's fair. It is very tropey. <laughs> but so it's his uniform that kind of gives him away. And that's the first little inkling we get of the world that this is set in, which is it's kind of like a military dictatorship. Yeah. But like a good one. Uh, there's like a couple light and sprinkles of like socialism and communism thrown in. Mm -hmm. Like... So the monarchy was deposed about 20 years prior to our heroine like being born. So she doesn't really remember anything in the old kingdom. But the country has since been divided into multiple military provinces, each run by a general. And the collective is managed by the commander. Commander Ambrose? Yeah. Ambrose. Yeah. Okay. So every citizen in this like newly structured regime is assigned a job and a uniform and movement between areas is strictly regulated. With this new government came like more restrictions, but also more freedom and like rights for women. Like mm -hmm. there's no like women can be in the military and can be senior advisors. And um, there's also less corruption, less mm -hmm. bribes. There's federal holidays, <laughs> woo -woo, <laughs> which we're all a fan of. And then there's also this very ominous code of behavior, which outlines this very black and white rules for society. What kind of stood out for me on the on the code of behavior, which is there's no intent. Mm -hmm. So like in our like justice system, you have like like action and, and intent. Yeah. And in here, it's just, no, it's just action. So like yeah. whether you killed someone because it was justified because they wronged you or it was an accident, it doesn't matter. The punishment is the same. And that's also our kind of first inkling that, oh, maybe Yelena, yeah, she killed a dude, but uh, maybe being in prison wasn't the right decision yeah. for her. Yeah. Because this good of behavior sucks. <laughs> Mm. I kind of also liked, um, I feel like right off the bat, you realize that men and women have equal standing in society and it's not even like a thing anymore. And that's something I appreciated because I feel like in a lot of fantasy books, they just kind of accept like the, the actual like standard social... gen like gender standards. Yeah. yeah. And they just kind of apply it to their fantasy world. But it's like this is a fantasy world where anything you think is true is true. So like, why do you have to make women lesser than men there too? Mm -hmm. Like, and so I just like that. It's just like, yep, they're equal now. And there's like women in the military. And like, you don't think twice about it. Like, I appreciated that about this book. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. And that's kind of where I got the shadow and bound comparison too. Mm, is because I can like, see that there's mm -hmm. way more magic utilitarian. Elements. Yeah. yeah. I thought the world building was actually super cool and I enjoyed mm -hmm. reading like the setting it was in. There's also some more modern like touches, like there's indoor plumbing. Oh, that is true. That always throws me off about books, but I just kind of like bypass it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to read about something is someone like having to like poop in the woods, you know? <laughs> yeah. So this this book has a fond place in my heart, but like on the fourth reread, I started noticing more of the like the things that I hate in books, which are like mm -hmm. these modern like phrases and terminologies mm -hmm. like that was sprinkled throughout. And I'm like, yeah. mm, this could have been fixed. But it's impressive that it only took your fourth reread. I know, right? Like <laughs> that's there is some stuff mentioned about like, I think he <laughs> Val Valak, who we haven't introduced yet fully. <laughs> one of the characters is described as wearing like a leotard later on. And I'm like, oh, that is true. And I'm like, what the fuck is a <laughs> leotard you doing in here? But also thanks. So this is my second reread and I did not even think twice about those things. So it really does take yeah. a fourth reread to, <laughs> to focus on the inconsistencies. <laughs> Which is fine. And that speaks to like, again, the characters mm -hmm. and the conflict and everything. Yeah. Back to Yelena. She's in the office. She realizes she's in front of the security guard and or security advisor. And it's basically they're going over that she's going to die. And it's just a one last like, yep, you're going to die. And then she gets murdered or hanged. Hung. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it cycles back to this code of behavior. So the security advisor tells her well one he's surprised because he turns to the guards and he's like the next prisoner was a woman like how <laughs> dare the prisoner be a woman and he like quickly switches to this very clinical like okay well i guess i'm just gonna roll with this mm -hmm. and then he says that based on the code of behavior the next prisoner to die can be the is offered the position of the taste tester for the the commander and so this is your choice, Yelena, like you can die now or you can die at any point in the future by poison and I'll train you to be the next taste tester. But it's also like what a fucked up kind of like crazy. It kind of feels like Saw. Did you see any of those movies no, ever? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's kind of like the 
the dilemma of like I could die right now and be in control of it and know that I'm going to die or it's like <laughs> oh no like I'm poisoned uh yeah you know what I mean like yeah that's, I mean that's, that's kind of scary that's pretty much the offer that's presented to her yeah. and she's like well I got nothing else to lose mm-hmm. so might as well yeah so she accepts the deal she becomes the commander's poison tester tester thing <laughs> and Valak the security guard advisor dude ninja um he <laughs> dude ninja uh he's like oh well here you look malnourished have a drink and so he gives her a drink and she tastes it and she st- feels kind of funny afterwards and oh he's poisoned her that's great <laughs> this is how we're kicking off the book surprise um, and it's like butterflies something or butterfly right? dust butterfly dust and it is a poison designed to kill her um as long as but there's an antidote and as long as she takes the antidote daily um she's safe but she's gonna die if she doesn't get the antidote it's a great insurance policy like you can't run away Mm because if you don't get this antidote uh you're gonna die so (laughs) yeah (laughs) sorry (laughs) (laughs) so i mean and she really that's the interesting thing like she kind of approaches yelena approaches life with this kind of like well i have nothing to live for and nothing to lose like i really am not invested one way or the other Mm -hmm. there's no hatred towards valak for the situation she's in yeah she's just kind of accepting everything yeah it's kind of like a clinical approach almost Mm -hmm. and i kind of feel like we'll get to it later but almost as a trigger warning or just like kind of like hey heads up there's Yelena has been really like both like sexually and emotionally and mentally abused or controlled by another character in her past. So I feel like this almost kind of speaks to her. I didn't think I'd make it this far. So like whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean? That's a really good point. And probably we should have prefaced this episode Mm. with a trigger warning. Like, yeah. A heads up for the future. Yeah, before you get any further. We <laughs> Keep have, it in your pocket. We're still in like the first 20 pages of the <laughs> book. So we have not gotten very far. If you don't want to read it anymore, that's fine. Yeah, uh, it's just such a good book. Like just maybe like just read it. Just think about reading it. So <laughs> Yelena is poisoned. And then Valak, who is described, I he's described in detail. Yeah. So he's got like shoulder length, dark, wavy hair. <sighs> yeah. Blue eyes. Yeah. He's very like he's described as like a snow cat. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. Oh. <laughs> let me offend myself. Um, so like, I told my partner to grow out his hair. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can. Uh... <laughs> yeah, hot is basically the description. You know. I I don't know how to say the word. I can spell it L I T H. Leaf. Is yeah, that how you say I, it? I don't know, but that's how I say it in my head. Okay. Lithe. I I don't. Leaf sounds better. Lithe sounds like lice. I don't know how to say it. Like, I don't even, like, speak it aloud in my head. I just know the meaning. But that's how this, how Valak mm-hmm. is described as this Mm-mm-mm. ninja. <laughs> He's one of the, one of the, like, underrated male romance. He's a little bit more hot-headed than Shiv Freya. I could see that. And more serious than Poe. Yeah, but he's also um, kind of, like, more fun than the other characters. Like, we have moments where he's lighthearted. Yeah. Which I don't think we always get. And I feel like um, you kind of don't get that in, like, Akatar or, like, some of the bigger ones. They're always seen as kind of this, like, serious or, like, you know, purposely batty kind of thing. But he's, like, very real. <laughs> Yelena has been poisoned. Poisoned. By butterfly's dust. Butterfly dust. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's funny because I was doing the arts. <laughs> We're trying to be very serious right now. <laughs> it's not working. We no. have no focus whatsoever. <laughs> All right. Valak has assigned Marge. Marge. I, that's how I read it. Did you yeah. know how you read Marge. it? Marge. Marge. It's um, even spelled like M A R G G. Yeah. So like aggressive G sound at the end. Yeah. Marge. <laughs> <laughs> I wish she said she did this like cat growl. <laughs> We're never gonna finish this book. No. <laughs> okay. Valak is assigned Marge, who's like a castle servant slash personal housekeeper, mm-hmm. to escort Yelena to her personal room. Mm-hmm. Marge takes her to the castle seamstress. Like mm-hmm. Taylor. Yeah. And it's this weird kind of, I think this is where the socialism, communism thing comes in. Where oh. like, it's like a free for all with the food and mm-hmm. like the clothing. Like just, this is your allotted attire. Yeah. So you get free boots and free uniforms. Mm-hmm. It is kind of interesting because, so the seamstress lady, uh, she's not like a main character whatsoever. 
But she immediately reminds me of... I don't know her name, but from Shadow and Bone, Anya, um, the head makeup chick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Immediately, like the same fucking like they're both blonde. They're both chatty. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, dude. This is like this has to be this is going to sound bad, but like the Bible of fantasy romance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like everyone kind of takes a bit of it. (laughs) Everyone should read Grand Duel Poison Study. There's got to be a third one. Anything by Tamora Pierce, probably. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of the like OG. It's right. 2005 is right where things kicked mm-hmm. off. Yeah. But yeah. So Yelena is kind of, okay, I'm, I'm the new poison taster tester. She gets her uniform. She finds her own personal room. As she kind of, she gets sick and kind of falls asleep and recovers eventually after taking this butterfly's dust. And she's told like, okay, in the next morning, come back to come back to Valak's office, get your antidote, and then we'll proceed from there. Mm-hmm. So she wakes up. In her room and she's like, oh, I'm hungry. And I think maybe I'm mixing my scene up where she actually meets this person, but she makes her way down to the castle kitchen and she meets this lovely individual named Mm -hmm. Rand, who Mm -hmm. is the resident cook for the commander. And he's like a wizard of a chef. Mm hmm. And he feeds her and is, like, very friendly and she's kind of suspicious. Um, with reason. <laughs> yeah. Like, she does not have a good yeah. foundation with humanity in general. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so she goes back. So she gets her food from from Rand, meets him, and then she makes her way to the office. She gets a little poison lesson from Valak, who's mm-hmm. like, okay, taste these foods. Like, mm-hmm. does it taste better or whatever? Mm-hmm. I did. These scenes were kind of fun uh, between her and Valak because it felt uh like obviously the power dynamic was you know student and teacher a little bit but i feel like he also kind of was impressed by her like didn't uh, didn't treat her like someone that needs to be taught and is like lesser than and like uh maybe not inferior but you know what i mean it it kind of felt equal almost like it did and i think that was so one valak has been acting as the commander's taste tester mm-hmm. since the last taste tester died oh yeah so valak is so good as a tester that he he's the only one eating the commander's food mm-hmm. and he's really good so i think yelena being as good as she is right off the bat he's oh. like oh this person is almost equal to me or could be yeah. equal to me which is always intriguing yeah i feel like you kind of pick up on vibes from people like that like yeah. uh you realize that you're dealing with someone like slightly competent and you're like mm-hmm. oh okay mm, yeah we're good we can trust you a little <laughs> bit more yeah the other interesting thing is between Velik and yelena is she is refusing to disclose anything about why she was imprisoned for a year yeah and you can tell it kind of like eats at him he's like why the fuck like you seem like a regular person but you like legit murdered someone like what is happening and, and not even someone like, like a general son yeah which is later revealed or it's it's pretty close in the yeah. beginning like mm-hmm. so it's we kind of get start to get flashbacks of Yelena's past. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she was raised as an orphan in the this general's house. General uh, Brazel? General bitch ass is what we're calling <laughs> it. Um, it starts with a B. It works. It, it does start with a B. <laughs> and so so she was raised as, a, as an orphan with other children. And uh, she murdered this dude's son viciously. So every and it's his only son too, which uh, lol, like you know the next dynasty, blah blah blah, oldest son, boo. But that like carries some weight, <laughs> quite a bit. And so Yelena is refusing to disclose any of the details about like why she murdered him, mm-hmm. uh, her past or anything, because one it doesn't matter according to the good of behavior why she did it or if it was self defense. Like, it shouldn't matter to someone like Valak, who supports the commander. Yeah. Um, But I kind of like, so I feel like Valak's character, and we'll kind of get into this throughout the book, but with the preface that he's a little bit morally gray. And I say that not in the like, oh, morally gray, main male character, whatever. But he's like actually morally gray. Like there's decisions that are kind of not in line with his very rigorous, you know, code of conduct. But he does whatever he has to do to protect the commander. And so he's like actually morally gray. Like some of the things he do are just very questionable. I mean, if you're the spy master, you have to do yeah. questionable things to like protect your sources mm-hmm. and and like preserve the the safety like, of the nation yeah yeah fair so yeah he's he's not necessarily a good dude yeah but uh, <laughs> but, but yeah the, the ninjaness comes out um yep yeah yelena is making her way back to she's either coming to 
or going from Valak's offices, mm-hmm. still living in her little like closet of a room, mm-hmm. when she suspects that some of the people are following her mm-hmm. and like people, General Bitchass's guards. Can <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> I got me a guard? I love it. So <laughs> continue. <laughs> so the general, so she murdered this dude's son. So he's got it out for her. He mm-hmm. wants her to die. He was mm-hmm. counting on her like swinging from a noose. Yeah. And so. He's like, fuck this bitch. I'm going to send my own men after her. I can't mm-hmm. trust the government to take care of this. Yeah. So she senses she's being followed, realizes it's the general's men. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, fuck me. So she like <laughs> runs away, <laughs> hides in a closet. They track her down. And it's like this chase pursuit kind of scene. It's very like. Oh my cat and mouse. Cat and mouse, yeah. Like am I is she gonna survive? Like what's gonna happen? But then we get the Panther. <laughs> and then the Panther <laughs> She's caught. She's in the hallway, there's no one around these guards have her. And then <gasps> what's going on here? <laughs> this uh Yeesh. this man <laughs> man <laughs> Man with a capital M <laughs> uh, comes out of nowhere and like for lack of a better word, just disables these two very big burly guards yep and then they're lying on the ground unconscious from like two little darts in their neck yep and it's valak yep to the rescue Ah. and i just want to preface like male with a capital m is like big dick energy like women can have (laughs) big dick energy too but it's like that like whoo okay taking care of the situation (laughs) but there's like no swaggering it's just he's like you're fucking with my tester. Like, yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like 100% like competent and like confidence over the situation. Done. Yeah. Whew. So <laughs> this is the first time that Valak saves Yelena mm-hmm. from some sort of rough and tumble circumstances. And it might be crazy to say, but it never feels like she's a damsel in distress. It's almost like he's just like, yeah, this is taken care of now. Anyways, I will say on... The fourth read. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> that I started counting the number of times Valak has to save her. Interesting. There's a lot. Wow. So I'm just going to, it's getting ahead <laughs> a little bit. So this time, the time in the tavern. Oh, oh, yeah. The time in the woods. Oh, true. And then there is the <laughs> oh, other, <no. laughs> uh, the time in the dungeon. Oh, also. Mm. Yeah. This chick has saved a lot. So, yeah, it takes a fourth weird read to recognize that maybe this is not an equal, like, you know, not a damsel in distress. But don't let that deter you from reading this book. No, because it does not feel like it. Like, that was something that I thought was actually surprising when I was reading this book, as I did not think that there was necessarily a power dynamic, like, inequality between Valak and Yelena. Like, she has this very competent persona that kind of, you know, is throughout her scenes that Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, she's, like, got it under control. She at least, like, kind of, you know, is determined... She's confident she's going to do what she needs to do. So it doesn't feel as obvious as it might sound when we're talking about it. For Yeah, that's a good point. For someone who is as beat down as she is, yeah. who suffered a lot. Yeah. this The internal monologue, because this is written in first person. Yeah. It's not very um, downtrodden. No, it's she just, is out there. She's like, I have stuff I want to do, like... It's, it's very determined or... Yeah, it's like someone who's just taking the world as it comes without dwelling on the past. Yeah. It's a very unique perspective given the amount of suffering this character has gone through. Yeah. It's like continues to go through throughout the book. hmm Yeah. She, I would characterize her as like an actually strong female heroine. Like I know that's always thrown around like a strong female character, but like she's actually strong. Like mm-hmm. she went through some shit and she's like, I almost died, but like... I'm here to fuck shit up and do what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, she's continuously improving from her like, yeah. last experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Valak saves her for yeah. the first time. It's, but it's not like, not, it doesn't feel like saving. <laughs> like, he's very, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he's very cool about it. Like, yeah. he just kind of brushes it off like, oh, this is yet. Just another day at the office. Which is <laughs> double hot. Like, it, let's be real. About I mean, that. yes, obviously. <laughs> he's like, all right, let's go back to like tasting poison. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. Um. So there's another. There's the spin up session for Valak and Yelena, where he's like, I don't trust you to taste the commander's food for this period. Like, I need to know that you know what you need to know. Mm-hmm. And so he takes her back to his office and he gives her a cup of mint tea. Uh oh. 
And he asked her to taste it, and she tastes it, and it's like, oh, this is very minty. <laughs> <laughs> minty. <laughs> minty. And then he's like, well, how about you close, your, like, hold your nose closed and then taste it again? And so she does it, and it's like, oh, this is super bitter. And he's like, ha, 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 fuck you. <laughs> because it's poison. <laughs> you are going to die. And so he poisons her yep. with a poison called um, have a drink, my love, or my love for short. Aw. Foreshadowing. Which, which not aw, uh, because he poisoned her, but aw, uh, because foreshadowing, but also, anyways. <laughs> but it's called my love, and yeah. he gives her it. Gives her it? Gives it to her? Gives her the love. <laughs> <laughs> and she ends up in the hospital. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excruciating pain, like vomiting, dying, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. And his, like, explanation for this was that, yeah, you might die, and, like, hopefully you don't die, because I don't want to have to train another person, but in the case that the commander is poisoned with my love, which apparently assassins do um, periodically, you'll be able to, at the last second before you die, shout out, it's my love, and hopefully indicate who the apparent assassin was. Yeah, that is That's actually- like, convoluted justification. He's like, this. you might die, but uh, you need to train this way because you might save the commander. Yeah. Which- Fucked up. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. A, little, a lot of bit. It takes her days to recover. She's yeah. moved to like the castle hospital or mm-hmm. something like that. She's like vomiting on the floor. Literally living in her own shit. Yeah. It's gross. Yeah. My love. <laughs> yeah. But as she's recovering in the hospital, Valak's like, oh, great. You passed the test. <laughs> like bro really <laughs> this sucks um but excuse me <laughs> but then he tells her like well for your own security i'm gonna move you into my personal apartments mm, mm, uh-huh mm. i think i highlighted this part and literally wrote like hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay but really <laughs> we've seen a forced proximity trope or two oh my god so i i, I think also love it when we first read it, it was probably novel like oh of course he has to move right no you you couldn't assign one guard of the thousands yeah. you have to to protect her even now i'm like yeah you gotta live with just, her now just do it it's fine <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so she moves into Valak's apartment. She has her own room, which Marge, Marge, Marge <laughs> has kindly prepared for her by uh, sketching murderer into the dust on yeah insert furniture. Or Marge wall. moved like point three boxes, and she's like, "Okay, it's good." Yeah, <laughs> like so, girl, no, this is not livable. <laughs> yeah, Valak directed Marge, his personal housekeeper, to be like, "Prepare a room for Yelena," and she's like, "Fuck you." <laughs> Anyway, murderer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she moves into Valak's apartments and it's mm. romantic and she makes all these observations about like, oh, him as a person. No, what are all these interesting and beautiful sculptures lying around? And mm-hmm. all- I also love the fact that he's kind of described as a pack not- rat. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> he has like piles of books everywhere. He's a hoarder. Like-, like, yeah. 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 But it's hoarder hot version because it's books yeah that's <laughs> her voice got all like kind of breathy like eh, yeah <laughs> i mean hoarding with books isn't hoarding you're just that creating a library yeah, that's you're just all. a little dragon yeah yeah that's fair yeah there becomes there becomes i don't know what english that, that felt is. very formal <laughs> there, there becomes there becomes an uproar <laughs> later on when it's known or made public that Yelena is the new tester yeah. for the commander because General Bitchass is still like in the castle. And he's like, this bitch killed my son. Like she deserves to die. Yeah. And the commander's like, well, that's reasonable. Like, and he and the commander, Ambrose, turns to Valak and is like, Well, why should I not kill Yelena? Yeah. And Valak makes like a very valid argument, which is, well, you've never deviated from the code before. Like, yeah. why would you do that now? So. Which is a, kind of a fun observation. So, uh, what is his name? General Brazel, the guy whose son was killed by Yelena. Um, he's kind of asking the commander to deviate from this code, like make an exception for me because I'm a general and this is fucked up. And the general almost like uh, not realistically it kind of considers this as a plan. And then Valix is like, well, you've never done that before. And the commander's like, yeah, that is true. Like, nope, sorry, she's still around. Uh, I'll approve your like miscellaneous factory permit. So you're like kind of content with this, but like, there's no fucking way I'm deviating from this. Like it's written in the code. Can't do anything about it. <laughs> it's a very interesting like contrast between like the code working for Yelena and working against her all at the same time. Oh, true. Mm-hmm. So this was the one spot where it's like, 
okay <laughs> thankfully i'm not dead <laughs> yeah because it's because of the code because she's a tester and like because of the code that she was to be executed but also because of the code the commander can't deviate like <laughs> true <laughs> code sucks balls but like whatever but also sometimes not <laughs> mm-hmm. we kind of get a lot of scenes with like flashbacks from yelena's perspective mm-hmm. um with her history with general bichas i refuse to call him general what's his name brazel brazel yeah um he's faux show straight up psychopath yeah (laughs) um sociopath i don't even know the right like clinical term for evil yeah like not even evil like you know like oh he's like evil like Like, saw evil with a capital e Mm -hmm. yeah so and it's a lot of scenes uh where yelena is basically being tortured yeah like a child child yelena is being tortured physically mentally Mm -hmm. emotionally everything you had outlined before but it's like the worst kind of torture where you like owe a lot to that person because she was an orphan and then you know general brazler took her or bitch ass i'm sorry (laughs) excuse me (laughs) took her into his orphanage and took care of her and is like i am your protector but then started to like Like daddy syndrome yeah like torture her and then but you like want to keep that person like happy because you owe so much to him so it's like evil with a capital e like (laughs) so so for oh, for reference, one of the scenes that's described is she's forced to hang from like a ceiling with yeah. chains. So she's supposed to grip these chains and hold herself off the floor by several inches. And she fails after like an hour. Yeah. And so like the general's son is like, oh, you don't want to hang that way. So he forces her on outside onto a window ledge like six stories up and like hold onto the sledge with your fingertips until you can't. Yeah. So Ew. that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's interesting because when you're reading it, it's not that you gloss over these parts, but they don't they don't take your center attention or like it makes me wonder if that's like a missing component. Hmm. Like if the author was gonna do justice to a character that's suffered this much, yeah. like those kinds of experiences should be more impactful. Yeah. Like the way that Daughter of the Forest is written. Yeah. Because her whole ordeal is, like, extremely impactful. It kind of informs her character arc throughout the rest of the story. But this, uh, like, her experiences do impact her, but they're not quite as, like... It almost seems superficial. Yeah. Or um, I can't think of a more, like, correct term for it, but, like, trauma porn. Uh, Yeah. No, that's, that's, like, I think that's a... mm, Words. (laughs) That seems to be trend in fantasy like current yeah. fantasy romance like oh we're gonna make a lot of suffering a lot of violence a lot of nastiness happen mm-hmm. because i mean we're humans we like when we're reading this we kind of thrive on like yeah. seeing someone suffer so much but overcome it eventually yeah. there's satisfaction to that mm-hmm. but if you don't give it the justice it needs yeah it's kind of like like the red wedding scene and yeah sounds like, like you a little feel, bit too much you feel that though right yeah because the work was done to develop those characters yeah. like you don't want anyone to anyone to die mm-hmm. but when they did die you felt it because those yeah. characters meant something and it yeah. kind of feels like these the suffering that yelena experienced means somewhat less because yeah. it doesn't impact her current stayed as much yeah it kind of felt excessive almost or like um, yeah trauma porn like you were saying yeah just added in for like you know the scare factor but it's like this could have been handled a little bit more delicately but like also and i know it's not a an excuse but 2005 you know when this was released but also that's something to be aware of i think when you go into this that if you think about it too hard, you're like, this is really fucked up. <laughs> so, so if you look at the the hard copy that mm-hmm. that I have, it's very much the same kind of cover and marketing trends that you see on current fantasy mm. romance books mm-hmm. geared towards younger female readers. Okay, so we might as well talk about this right now. So I struggled because when I first read this book, I was like, this is YA. Like, there's no sex scene. Like, the sex scene is kind of, you know, like, metaphorical, like, you know, very flowery language. Like, you're not even sure if there's, like, a sex scene. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's YA. Because of that, there's no smut. But when you read it again, like, some of these scenes are of, like, Yelena's trauma and experiences. Like, they are fucked up. Like, I'm not sure that I would call this YA. No, I would not call this YA. And I think the... 
like the actual when it was published in 2005 it wasn't meant to be ya oh really like so luna publishing is it's like adult fantasy romance interesting yeah because i read this in 2016 so i was i wasn't a teenager but like this is the book that i would have read Mm -hmm. had i known about it when i was a teenager you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like so it's interesting i feel like there almost needs to be like a a uh, change in how we rate these books because like at first glance if you don't think about it like there's no smut there's no craziness like explicit detail of anything so you would think like why a but then you read some of these scenes of like yelena talking about what she went through and it's like whoa this is not YA at all that's so that's a really good question though like yeah what, what makes YA YA? is it yeah. the age of the character yeah because is- she's 20 yeah i think she's 20 ish yeah. Or around that time. Yeah. Is, so is it the age of the character or is it the explicitness of the like action and the yeah. setting? Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of the times it's the explicitness of the sex scenes. But it's like we talk about these like really kind of fucked up things. Like so Throne of Glass. Like now that I'm thinking of it, there's no smut until you get to like book like six maybe. But the first books, there's like a lot of explicit detail about like what Aelin or Selena went through. Like she was like whipped within fucking like inch of her life. It's like that's not really that's like a lot of violence for like a young, you know, person to read about. But it's like that's YA like your it's our YA conception of it now. Yeah. But I so when I when I think of why I YA, I think of Tamar Pierce. Yeah. Those books. Yeah. So that's there's I mean, there's violence in there. There's yeah. romance in there, but it's very muted. Yeah. For good reason. But it's interesting, too, because, like, you think of that cusp age of when you're kind of like a preteen turning into a teenager and you're kind of like aware of things. You're maybe like first coming into your sexuality and stuff. So in those Tamora Pierce books, maybe don't hit in the way that you want them to. So it's interesting that this would be the book that I would read at that age of maybe like 15, 16, 17, where you're like looking for a little bit something more. But it's like, what are we you know, giving to these age groups. It's like there's no sexual explicitness, but there's like very traumatic experiences and explicit detail. Do you, you know th- what I mean? Yeah. Do you think it's fair to put an age limit or an age mm-hmm. minimum on on books? I don't know. I actually saw um, a discussion about this on Instagram. So it was talking about if like your daughter or your son was like asking for not like smut recommendations, but they like want to read something that's a little bit more in explicit detail and like how you deal with that. And I don't I don't know because I mean, kids kind of have access to like porn and like explicit content like at younger ages and like whether you think that's allowed or not. But like what about books that maybe kind of talk about like the relationship building beforehand and like kind of put it in a context context of like a healthy relationship first Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i i don't know i i think if you're going to categorize a book based on age level it Mm -hmm. should be on the difficulty of the writing Mm. itself i could see that so simple english toned down not Mm -hmm. very particularly diverse vocabulary yeah marketed towards younger readers yeah but i once you hit i i want to say like 12 to 14 Mm -hmm. like that age window Mm -hmm. i don't think it's fair to put like a you need to be this old or this is what's appropriate for you as a reader because if we're going to give children or or kids sex education yeah or if we're going to allow them to like watch pg-13 movies which seem to be getting more and more explicit yeah as as, like the years progress Mm -hmm. why would we put a similar like oh this is a ya book yeah this is a new way book this is an adult book based on oh is there a sex scene in it how graphic is the sex scene that is true because i mean if you watch some of these like tv shows there's a lot of violence and so like jordan and i were talking about this beforehand but like for the readers like i want to reiterate so i took french for like a long time in high school and french films kind of like have a lot of sexual nudity and sexual scenes but it's just kind of like culturally like oh yeah that checks out but like violence isn't a major theme in any movies like that's kind of seen as the explicit content but in american films it's like flip-flopped so like you never see like male full frontal nudity like you might see female female nudity if they're trying to be you know like on the edge but you see violence like extreme violence throughout these movies and so i feel like it's kind of similar in books like we get these really explicit like violent scenes of people like chopping people's heads off and like blood squirting everywhere but like 
you know, they go into very metaphorical details of like sex scenes. And so it's kind of interesting that like why books might have a lot of violence in them, but they might not have sexual explicitness. So it's kind of like a like it might be marketed as a YA book and it might not have any explicit sex scenes, but it has really graphic details like torture and like murder. So it's like, what are we really kind of delineating? Because there's also erotica that has, you know, very sim simple sentences, like not a lot of complex word choices, um, especially with like book talk. So it's like, what makes a book YA versus, you know what I mean? Yeah, I... I think we stumbled on like a <laughs> foundational, yeah, I, <laughs> a I, black hole of. <laughs> so this kind of comes to one of my frustrations with shopping at Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. for example. Like, okay, so they have yeah. greatly expanded their YA and mm -hmm. new A, like just their fantasy section for YA yeah. and new A is massive. Yeah, but there are books that exist. Like I have found in both sections, mm -hmm. like in the adult fiction, in the YA fiction. Yeah, like how do you determine? Is yeah. it is the publisher telling you this is age appropriate for a fourteen year old or yeah. a sixteen year old? Because that's the part that kind of freaks me out. Because I know there are new a so Sarah J. Mass, an excellent example, and I only reference her because like everyone kind of uses that as a frame of context for these books. So her newer or her older books earlier in her series were less sexually explicit and so like i could say that those would be like 16 17 year olds could like read that and that would probably be you know age appropriate like generally but there are some very sexually explicit scenes later in those books and i would not categorize those necessarily as like new it or like ya so it's like that whole series is on a spectrum. So it's not like you can say that series is in the YA section. Because that would be, I personally would be like a little bit concerned if like the later books in the Throne of Glass uh, series were in the YA section. Because like it immediately starts out with this like sex scene on the beach and like there's all kinds of things okay. going on. <laughs> so I think the Throne of Glass series is is YA. But uh, yeah, Akatar is not. Interesting. Because I found Akatar in the adult fantasy section. I could see that, but I also can't. Yeah, so look at Harry Potter, too. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah! <laughs> I am not a fan of, like, delineating books by, like, oh, this is what's age-appropriate, because everyone's yeah. got a different idea of what's age-appropriate. That is true. But just saying it's a book. Yeah. Like, put, hey, this has explicit graphic material in it, and yeah. then you decide. Yeah. But do you put that caveat for like torture and stuff? Because like this oh, book. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. This book has some very like explicit torture scenes, but not necessarily explicit sexual material. Like the what American like fetishism? I of violence? Yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah. There's a reason I, I, I don't like horror movies. I don't like. Mm, um, I could see that. I, lo I don't mind scary movies that are like suspenseful and trade yeah. on like sharp, jolty camera movements and sounds and stuff. But mm -hmm. like the Saw movies. Yeah. Like it's, it's just too it's much gore porn. Yeah. Anyway, back yeah. to uh, Poison stumbled Study. Stumbled upon. <laughs> Yelena has been tasting, testing as a. Taste tester? Taste tester. I feel <laughs> like I feel like there's a, twister. Uh, a word for it that I'm missing here. Food taster? Food ta food taster. Is that that yes. <laughs> oh my god. Um so she's been doing this for a little while in training. Yelena eventually asks if the taster is a paid position mm -hmm. because she needs things like toiletries and night clothes and she wants to go to this upcoming fire festival continue this is such a cute scene <laughs> and valak tells her that her continued living is her payment but he does direct her to like go return to the castle tailor and pick up whatever she needs from the castle stores it's so cute because I feel like this scene is him trying to be like tough and like your life is your payment but he's also like what would you buy with like your money? And she's like, uh, pajamas and a hairbrush. And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. So yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Valak and Yelena witness, like go to the central hall. They're interacting with the commander and they witness this debate between two of these main military commanders regarding the best means of hunting down a fugitive. One stance is to swarm the area with troops and win by sheer numbers. But the other argument is to use one or two highly trained personnel, <laughs> special forces, 
<laughs> yeah. It kind of comes down to a strength versus intelligence argument. Mm, brains versus brawn. Yeah, and we know this is how, we know how this is going to end. Yeah. Obviously, it's this is a spoon-fed plot. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. But it was kind of fun because the scene, you kind of uh, get the impression that the commander is a little bit more like pragmatic and uh, I don't even know the right word. But just the fact that he's like entertaining this debate and is like encouraging people to have kind of these like diverse thought exercises is like, oh, OK, so he's not like a crazy, you know, it's uh, not military d- yeah. dictator. Like he's like. Yeah, like you guys need to talk this out and like, what is the best solution? (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's a very, it's what you would want in a leader, which is kind of a reveal later in the book. I love the commander as a character. The commander is just caveat that best character ever in a book ever. (laughs) Kind of have a thing for the commander. I do too. (laughs) I'm glad we've gotten that out. (laughs) And I feel like this will feel like more important later. So just like hold on to that bit and put it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the commander uh, suggests a competition and sending a person out to be hunted by these two teams. One with lots of men, one with two highly trained people Mm -hmm. and so valak offers up yelena to the task arguing that (laughs) as an untrained civilian but an intelligent one she's going to exhibit escape patterns similar to an escaped fugitive Mm -hmm. so she suggests he suggests that she be paid a reward Hmm. interesting after interesting. their conversation about what she would buy with her money <laughs> yeah based on the duration she manages to stay like free mm-hmm. during this little contest and he's just looking out for her yep. and just like totally yep. cute <laughs> i love the fact he's one of those like softies at heart where he like tries to put off this like big bad assassin ninja guy but then he's like I also make little statues with rocks and I'm artistic and like I'm also interested like you want to buy night clothes like let me devise this kind of convoluted like, plan. For this you is to get a money. very like he <laughs> inserts her in this grand yeah. plan. There is not a chance in a hell that this dude does not have another equally qualified competent yeah. person to yeah. pretend to be a prisoner and said he's like hey commander make my uh, Elena <laughs> this very hot woman who's living with me right now. Because that's the fun thing. I think there's a scene like a month or so or like a week or so after she gets out of the dungeons and she's like cleaned up and he's like wow the difference that a bath makes and it's like boy you were sprung to oh. like, <laughs> immediately <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's just so cute that he's like he's a softy he very much is yeah. it's adorable it's one of the I think it's the same I keep coming back to Shivariath and I hope yeah. it's not overtried but like he has the same like tendencies this very understated yeah. Wanting to care for people around him, mm-hmm. but doesn't want to be noticed doing it. Yeah. He's like, I'm just going to go with this very convoluted route and make <laughs> someone else do it, like on the surface. It. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. So basically, all the parties agree. Yelena warns them both that General Bitch Ass. Oh, I thought you were going to give me the real name. Oh, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> General Bitch Ass. General Bitch Ass is still on the loose. So if they could please keep her involvement in this escape game kind of close hold, because <laughs> Yeah. She would get murdered. <laughs> Basically, she's afraid of being alone anywhere because this general yeah. is going to send his his dudes after her. His goons. Yeah. So later after it's like this whole plan is devised, she's wandering around the castle and she kind of overhears the fact that the castle kitchen staff are taking bets on how long she'll last in this game. Yeesh. Oh, dear. <laughs> that would hurt my soul. We went from <laughs> close hold to people are taking bets and it's a pub- public yeah. matter. It's not what? good. <laughs> Later that evening, Mm -mm. she is uh, asleep in her tiny little bed, and she wakes up because she is hauled out of the bed and slammed (laughs) against a wall. And hello, (laughs) Valak. He is the slammer. He is pissed (laughs) and super hot. He is literally holding her inches off the ground, and he's, like, yelling at her. He suspects that she leaked her involvement in the game for reasons unknown yeah he's like what the fuck were you thinking which valid because what would she think yeah or and, which was what was she thinking yeah. I, I don't know <clears throat> but <Continue>. he, <laughs> so he's mad that she's jeopardizing her own life for mm-hmm. like what he probably suspects are like superficial reasons mm, mm-hmm. and yelena is equally pissed and she's like you left your goddamn papers out on your desk so Obviously, someone with access to your room, fucking Marge, could find out the details of this game. Was not me. Yeah. <laughs> and so Valak is like, huh. And like he's holding her against a wall in the air. And he's like 
perturbed. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz <'Cause perturbed>. she's <laughs> she's right. <laughs> I kind of love that about him is that he's like, yeah, that is a good point, isn't it? And mm. kind of like puts her down and like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, they kind of go their separate ways. Neil is like, well, um, I'm a little scared, but a little turned on. <laughs> <laughs> and Valak is probably like, I'm also a little turned on, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, the This game is going to happen. But before the game is scheduled to happen, this fire festival is... Which makes me LOL. Not fire festival, like the failed social media event that there's a Netflix documentary about. Like a festival, there's like a an ice festival and then fire festival yeah anyways this is one of the federal holidays and it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god fire. fire fire festival is a federal holiday it's like this carnival-esque thing are you okay katie that's our episode title <laughs> I'm going to continue. Uh, so before before the game is this fire festival, this is the one that like she wanted some pocket money for to like go to. Mm-hmm. She goes with Rand, who is the chef of the castle, and some of the other kitchen staff. But as she's at this festival, she manages to get separated from the group kind of later in the day. And we also kind of get some tidbits like throughout the festival that she's like, oh, she's really interested in the acrobatics. Like, hmm, maybe she was an acrobat. Maybe. Really? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, she was an acrobat. Yeah. We're kind of glossing over a lot of, there's a lot of details that are thrown in in this first half of the book that does mm-hmm. a lot to build her character, build yeah. her previous experience. Like mm-hmm. a lot, all of the recollections she has about her experience with General Bitch asks, mm-hmm. I still can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> um so we're very much skimming the summary here, but yeah. this is not it. Yeah. But there's also like both her history, but then also tidbits of her as a character that make her kind of engaging and interesting as a main character. I feel like she's maybe not in my favorites, but I definitely liked her when I was reading. Yeah. Like she's someone like you kind of respect. Like you maybe not like personally, but you're like, that's a person that's like i respect you like some put some respect on the name (laughs) i don't think she was distinctive enough to be incredibly i can see that and that i think that's what i'm trying to say is like not likable but definitely like she's readable yeah i can respect the fact that she went through this trauma but she's still trying hard she's an acrobat she's an acrobat she's at the fire festival and so she is kind of having a good time with rand She's like, oh, I finally feel like human again and like enjoying herself and like realizing who she is independent of being a food taster. Mm -hmm. And she kind of gets separated from the group Mm -hmm. and she winds up in this tavern. Yeah, like a beer garden. Yeah, that's kind of what I pictured. It's like a (laughs) modern day beer garden. And she finds herself surrounded by like these burly looking dudes again. And they're like, we're going to kill you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah <laughs> and they basically like like get control of her and then there's cost a cost her a, a cost her yes yeah. there's there's another woman involved who's like calling mm-hmm. the shots and like yeah. and she this woman tells the, these dudes like don't don't stab her that will cause a mess in a scene so a one of these guards like whips out a garret a garot garot i don't know how i'm gonna have to they cut gonna strangle her <laughs> they're gonna strangle her to death yeah. and it's like around her neck when this like drunken beer garden attendee <laughs> like stumbles into their group and is like, hey guys, what's going on? And like he's like, we are trying to attempt a murder right now. Yeah, like you're in the way. And so like this drunk dude swings with his like empty beer mug and like smashes one of the dudes in the face. And then he like does a twirly move and like smashes the other dude in the face. And then, oh shit, it's Valak. <laughs> wow. He's doing some ninja moves. And eventually she, all the guards taken out and all that's left is this woman who's mm-hmm. calling the shot. And so Yelena's like, what the fuck is going on? Um. (laughs) And she's like, I'm saved, except she's not because she kind of gets thrown into this magical, like, headache, migraine thing. Yeah. Where she feels like she's basically dying, like, Mm -hmm. mentally. And Valak is shouting at her, like, start reciting poisons, like anything, like, get your focus back. And it's kind of pieced together that this woman is a magician. Yeah. And she's kind of doing this negative energy field thing on her. And it's (laughs) it's not pleasant. And Yeah. yeah, so she kind of comes to, she, like, talks herself out of this mental prison mm-hmm. and the magician runs off and it's her and Valak. 
<laughs> Saved again. Yeah. Have you seen the movie Tombstone? Yeah. <laughs> of course I've seen it. I, Rob made fair. me watch it. Like, I know. <laughs> it's my partner's favorite movie for some very obscure reason. What? But the I'll scene... be your Huckleberry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the scene where he has the little like tin cup and uh, the guy's oh, like trying yeah. to flex. Yeah. That's exactly how, if you have never seen Tombstone, you're probably like, what the fuck? But he's just <laughs> like Huckleberry. flexing on this dude with like a little tin cup, like swirling it around his finger like it's a gun. That's exactly what the scene that is. That is totally Valak vibes. Yeah. He's like, I don't need big dick energy. I have big dick energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not flexing for anyone. That's it. Oh my gosh, that is the perfect like match for Valak. Yeah, is uh, Doc Holliday. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which he gives me Johnny Depp vibes. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. We stand Doc Holliday and Valak. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to know what the no. comparison yeah. is. Just think cowboy Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> cowboy, but like slightly dark. Yeah. Morally gray. Would morally, you say? Mor- <laughs> <laughs> morally gray Doc Holiday. Yeah. We love it. But anyways. <laughs> anyway, that concludes uh, part one of yeah. Poison Study. They're in the beer garden. <laughs> <laughs> and a drunk dude just took out a bunch of evil people. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. So from. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna... just like a hard like <laughs> anyways <laughs> so it's over <laughs> welcome to poison study there's a lot going on so yeah. from our shelf to yours we'll see you on the next page hi readers if you'd like to help us pick our next book send us a message on instagram Or if you'd like to just listen, we post new episodes every Monday and Wednesday on Spotify, Apple, and Amazon. Thanks for listening. Bussin'.